Um, it's so wonderful to be here with all of you in Florence. It's a gorgeous city, but really what I've spent my last week doing is just catching up with so many people who I haven't been able to see over the past few years. So I'm excited for more of those conversations and I hope that my voice holds up. Um, so as Alessandra introduced, my name is Maggie Colley. I serve as the executive director for OpenStreetMap US. Let me see if I can get this. And many of you in this room may have heard of OpenStreetMap. Raise your hand if you've used it. Raise your hand if you've edited it. All right. So this will be the very short part of my presentation. But for those of you who are not completely sure, um, OpenStreetMap is the world's largest freely editable geospatial data commons. Um, it enables a lot of projects and collaboration. And it's pretty awesome. Something you may not know is that all over the world there are local communities and chapters that support this project. And where I serve is one of those. OpenStreetMap US is the 501c3 in the United States that supports OpenStreetMap through events like our State of the Map US, supports local communities like the great group in New York, I know someone's here from the New York community, um, supporting new programs like our Mapping for Impact we have an education initiatives. We have an education working group. We have a program called Teach OSM that's working to integrate OpenStreetMap into education and curriculum around the US and the world. Something else we get the privilege of doing is convening stakeholders. Uh, we sit at the intersection of all of the sectors and all of the users, public, private, the mappers, and Something I spend a lot of my time doing is talking to people about OpenStreetMap, seeing that we have the same vision and, and supporting those collaborations. So today's talk is about one of those collaborations, um, our work with the federal government in the US. OpenStreetMap use in governments is nothing new, it's, but it's a very new conversation for OpenStreetMap US to be in. I began this job in the summer of 2019, and a few weeks later, I got an email from um, a geographer at the US Department of Transportation who wanted to start talking about how we could collaborate um, on our data sets. I'm a GIS analyst. I thought, yes, let me go talk to the US DOT, see what they want. So I went to lunch with the DOT. What came clear in that conversation um, was that the US government has been crowdsourcing for decades. Um, they've been interested in the crowd for, for quite a long time. And so has OpenStreetMap. Has Open but we are working in parallel and collecting data for different data sets. Um, so by the end of that conversation, we're like, well, how do we, how do we change this and shift this? So we continue the conversation that fall. We held State of the Map US in Minneapolis, and um, someone hosted a government panel. These were their topics. I know. Can authoritative and crowdsourcing work together? How does the ODBL license work? Um, could government data be filled, gaps be filled with OpenStreetMap data? Would this collaboration even work? Is it already happening? I did not envy the panelists. I think someone that was on that panel might be in this room. Um, so it was a great conversation, but really it, it kicked off a series of, thank you, <laughs> um, of, of even more conversations. As many of you know, you open one door and you find a room like this with so many more people to talk to. So that August, I invited as many people who wanted to be in the room to a new working group, the OpenStreetMap US Government Committee. Um, we had 15 people in the room the first time, and I thought that was a real win. But then I learned a little bit more about the US federal government. And this is, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> so, you know, if we were really going to do this collaboration the right way, we had to start building our stakeholder group, throwing open more doors and inviting people into the conversation. So in those first meetings, it became pretty clear as well that we spoke different languages between OpenStreetMap and the federal government. They spoke in standards, we spoke in schemas. 
we don't have any rules. They have a lot of rules. So we, did, we started with a lot of education. So folks from the US community came in and did presentations on the editors, on the workflows, um, on their local communities. And we also heard from the federal and, and local government members about what they're working on, what they'd like to see, and, and the challenges that they face in all of their agencies. What really became clear is that everyone valued open and the crowd and the power of the crowd. So we focused on this value of open and what that meant to the different stakeholders. Because it was a government committee, we have a, a charter. <laughs> it's our most formal committee, but we set out some objectives. Um, you know, that shared understanding led to identifying a few things that we might be able to accomplish as a group. We wanted to foster awareness, awareness of OpenStreetMap in, in the different agencies, state, local, and federal. Um, what does it really mean to use OpenStreetMap and, and be a part of that community, not just one-way street? Uh, what does it mean to use the ODBL license with other licenses? What's compatible? How do we talk the same language and spread that translation to the rest of the groups and that entire org chart? Um, would OpenStreetMap ever be considered an authoritative source? Uh, and then exploring that data exchange, which is something I'm going to go into today. So the conversation grew. We're now up to 60 people um, in the last invite. Here's some of the agencies that are getting involved in the conversation. You can see it spans a wide variety of interests. So given the time, I will talk about two initiatives that have sprung from this collaboration. A lot of times in those meetings, we're, we're catching up, we're, we're giving overviews, and we don't have time to dive into the things we really want to you know, get our hands dirty on. So I'll start with the Trail Stewardship Initiative and then talk about public domain map. So this, this story began about a year ago. Um, I got an email, like if people just want to, like now that there's someone to email, I get a, a lot of different kinds of emails. Um, and when it starts to dear OpenStreetMap, I usually get pretty nervous. Uh, but in this case, it was a, a backcountry coordinator for the National Park Service. And I'm sure this was the case everywhere, but uh, US parks were seeing unprecedented visitation levels during the pandemic. Everybody became a hiker. <laughs> well, this is wonderful, you know, we want everyone to enjoy the outdoors, but what they began to see is, you know, they have their authoritative National Park Service maps, but most people carry one of these around, and they open their app, and they're looking at it, and they're following a trail. So, what should I mean to switch that? So they're following whatever the map says is authoritative. They want to go to the, the coolest, most off-trail locations for their Instagram photos. And the Park Service was getting really frustrated because they were having to rescue people. People were messing up, you know, important ecological um, things like cryptobiological soil. Say that five times fast. Um, so this person came to me and said, what can OpenStreetMap do? And I had to sit with that. What can we do? It's a global map. Everyone's contributing. The trails data is coming from people all over the world. Um, how are we going to figure this out in such a decentralized ecosystem? So to her credit, I said, you know, we have this mappy hour every month. <laughs> Would you like to come and speak about this at one of our mappy hours? And she agreed. Uh, so we spent an hour in public discussion. Here's some screen captures of her presentation. Um, you can see in this one, the trail goes straight down a cliff. <laughs> I don't think you'd want to take your five-year-old down that trail. Um, so started to identify places, at least in the park that she managed, that were really tricky, you know, they were social trails, they existed, but they didn't really exist. So that mappy hour went really well. So at the end of it, I said, who would like to help figure out this challenge with me? This is a picture I took yesterday, and I just thought it was kind of perfect for this, um, because we want to keep people from doing that. So 
So we built another working group. <laughs> uh, we created more collaborative space. Um, it was really, it, there's eight people from that government working group that have now joined this and actually have been really spearheading this effort within their government agencies. We have representation from the mapping community, from the government, and from those private companies that are utilizing OpenStreetMap data in their applications. So we really have so many people in the room now that can help to tackle this. And it's actually going really well. <laughs> We're not yelling at each other. We're trying to collaborate. I have to say I was pretty nervous that first meeting, but um, we're really looking for it way forward. And there are up to 58 people there and growing. Every time I give a talk about this, people want to help, which is great. But I think we're going to have a couple hundred soon. <laughs> so there's a lot more I could talk about here, but I have a couple other things to cover. But right now, we're looking at a pilot. So. To solve this problem, we started looking at the data side of things. You know, how are things tagged in OpenStreetMap? And then how are they being rendered by the app companies? What tags are they using to say this is the trail you should be on? And then talking to the land manager to say, is this showing up how you manage this trail on the ground? Um, so we're starting from the tagging side. We're trying a couple of different approaches in an area of Washington State. <coughs> Excuse me. It is a very complex situation. The Fish and Wildlife Service owns some of the land. Some of the trails go through private land. Um, some of it's park service land. So there's different approaches to trail management through all those places. Um, so we're working on this pilot to, to do the tagging, identify what, what tags work, and then work with the op companies to see how that ends up rendering. Um, it's been... <coughs> Sorry. I've been talking for a week. Um, there's a lot of text on this screen. Uh, that this is kind of how we phased it out. We'd like to finish the pilot project and make sure that it's rendering and talk to the land manager and see, hey, is this work for you? We can try this. Um, and then we can work to expand that stakeholder group, get local trails groups involved, local, local and state government. Yes. Thank you. Read it. Go ahead. <laughs> So the third one's really ambitious. This one kind of makes me breathe a little bit shallow. We want to lead a national campaign to map these trails. It's something that's necessary, um, and I think, at least in the major parks, we can have some impact to try to keep people safe and save those ecosystems from damage. <coughs> all right, how much time do I have? Okay, all right. This is the part that might be more interesting to everybody here is there's tooling that might be needed for this. Um, and in those initial conversations, thinking about that data exchange, we are trying to figure out how we can collaborate. Because right now you have, at the top, that's the federal government workflow. They do have crowdsourcing. It goes through authoritative review, and then it goes out to the public domain. You can take that data and bring it into OpenStreetMap, no problem. The workflow at the bottom does not translate into providing that data back to those government agencies. So right now, it's kind of a one-way street. How many people in this room deal with licenses? I'm not a licensed lawyer, <laughs> so I'm not going to go too deeply, but you understand that there are challenges and there are nuances. Um, so this is the TLDR. Public domain can go into ODBL, ODBL cannot go into public domain. So instead of that parallel workflow, we started exploring the potential of combining our forces on the crowd side, so starting everything in the public domain. So, you know, right now when you map an open street map, you're mapping on everything that's licensed ODBL. So what we're building is something where you'd map on government imagery, map on government center lines, and then be able to share that data back to the agency side and then into OpenStreetMap with an authoritative review. We're also doing a project for that in the West uh, that's in Colorado. It was identified early on that um, 
the, F, the Federal Railroad Agency in the U.S. wanted to see if they could collect tunnel corridor data through OpenStreetMap um, on a lot of their, their rail lines. Um, in the United States, we also have an amazing railroad community, and it kind of was a match made in heaven <laughs> for a pilot. So we brought everybody into the room, and we started talking about how we'd fill those gaps. And we're working on that pilot project right now, and the, the tool PDMAP is still in prototype, so I can't show it to you today. Um, but if you're familiar with the OpenStreetMap stack, it uses the task manager, it uses a version of ID editor, um, and then that back end is all of the government sources of imagery and um, data. Very long phase one. <laughs> Um, started this conversation two and a half years ago, but I actually am really proud of how far we've come considering the complications and everyone who's been involved. Here's the basic objectives of this tool. Um, we want to fill gaps in both data sets. We want to improve interoperability between the data sets, so thinking back to that conversation about standards versus schema, what is the shared language? It doesn't have to be the same language, but we at least need to be able to understand each other when we're talking about these data sets. We wanted to provide a review of authoritative data. This was kind of a complicated step, but if anybody's used the tasking manager, it allows you to validate what someone else has mapped. So we're gonna utilize that technology to check the edits, have somebody from the Federal Railroad Administration who knows these tunnels, knows these lines, check the data, stamp it authoritative, and then send it into the two streams. In this way, we respect both the public domain and the ODBL licenses, and it's no longer a one-way street. We open that up, and it's a two-way street between the, the government agencies and OpenStreetMap. Here's a lovely graphic of that, how that's gonna work. Um, so right now, it was the FRA and the seat on the left. Identifying that data gap, that data need that potentially we could all fill with our shared crowd. Volunteers will map the data, goes through the authoritative review. Once it's approved, it goes into those public domain databases. And then the gray area is where we're still working on the prototype of how that will get back into OpenStreetMap. We have quite a few um, ideas on the table. We just want to make sure it works for a couple different use cases because we're working with very different geometries uh, for all these, these different needs. So what's next? Um, we're finishing that pilot and we're hoping to have something to show in November. Um, we're gonna do a full workflow testing and then and test it on these other use cases. Um, other groups have reached out to say would it work for address data? Would it work for building data? Will it work for this? Will it work for trails? We're hoping to use it for trails. Um, so there's a lot of user testing that we need to do. And then we're just gonna throw that spaghetti against the wall because we can and see if it works. This is one thing I've learned in this process. So we gotta start really small and go very slowly um, to make sure that you have everybody on board. Uh, there's can imagine even in a country where we speak the same language, we don't. So going slowly en enables you to have the conversation as many times as you need to, to make sure that everybody's on board. We'd love you to join us. Maybe not everybody, it's a lot of people, but <laughs> join the conversation at least, and there's ways to get involved. We have a Slack channel, lots of Slack channels. Um, you can support OpenStreetMap US by becoming a member. <clears throat> Now, a very exciting announcement. Previously, we only supported individual membership, but um, we're announcing that we're gonna start uh, inviting academic, corporate, and, and government members into our membership model. Join one of our events or working groups. Um, share your ideas or experience, even if it's responding to somebody on our Slack channels or on Discord or on Reddit or on, you <laughs> go on and on and on. Um, Everyone in this room is probably an advocate for Open Geo already, so thank you for your work. Um, and then if, if there's a community in your area, think about meeting up with them, having a beer, maybe going to Mappy Hour. There's a couple of upcoming events. Um, if you're in the US or not, you can, you can tune in virtually to our uh, Mapping USA that'll be happening in November. 
Um, we'll be talking about this again there. Uh, Fed Geo Day is going to be November 3rd in Washington, D.C., if you happen to be in the area. And I just want to say thank you to that 100, 120 people that have been part of this conversation, the OpenStreetMap U.S. board, and everyone else that's been supporting these efforts along the way. Groovy. Thank you.